Enter. I said enter, Baraka. Have no fear. Our betrayal is complete. I have dealt with those once loyal to Shinnok. This victory is ours. You bask in your newfound power on the throne of Queen Sindel, while I am forced to hide in the shadows. Who is it you are hiding from? The Elder Gods are dead. Raiden is dead. And thanks to you, Shinnok is dead. Everyone is dead. Yes, everyone in this forsaken realm is dead. How do we rule a realm with no one in it? This war was not about holding court to mortals. It was about obtaining power. I now possess that power. And I am forced to live out my existence in a dead realm with a madman. Now, sorcerer, you will pay with your life. I haven't a life to give, you fool. What? This week on Cooking with Scorpion, learn about chopping, tenderizing, chopping, cake decorating, and chopping. The very first time I saw Mortal Kombat, I was totally blown away by the extremeness of it. In 1992, Mortal Kombat changed the world of video gaming forever. The use of digitized actors, compelling characters, and gruesome graphic effects all helped to create a phenomena that took arcades by storm. A lot of people don't realize that the game was originally meant to be, you know, a quick project. I think if Mortal Kombat did not have any blood in it, it probably wouldn't have had the kind of success it did. Fatality. Seeing people's first reaction of Mortal Kombat 1 in the arcades uh, was, was pretty intense. You know, their, their reaction was just so over the top that, you know, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Victory. Mortal Kombat 1 exceeded everybody's expectations. I don't think anybody was expecting it to be, you know, to become as big as it did. There is no question of the impact Mortal Kombat has had on gamers around the world. Ah! Fight! I 
love playing Mortal Kombat. In 1993, Mortal Kombat 2 was unleashed upon a sea of bloodthirsty fans. More characters, more moves, more blood. The biggest challenge was probably just the amount of content that we had to generate. You know, before everything that wore Mortal Kombat 1, we wanted to double. All of the fans of the first game had high expectations for the second one. The merchandising was when we really kind of realized just how big the game had become. You know, it had become a lot more than a game. The rivalities and the friendships kind of poking fun at that whole uh, controversy that came about. All eyes were on us, whereas before we kind of snuck up on everybody. But the fans would still not be satisfied. Nineteen ninety five saw the release of Mortal Kombat three with a diverse cast of characters, crisp graphics, and an intricate combo system. Reality is boring. Nobody wants to pay for reality. We take everything beyond reality to the point where it's, you know, the only way to do this is, is through our video game. It was around this time that Hollywood smelled box office potential in the franchise. We were very happy with the first film. You know, we had seen it um, throughout its entire production. We, it turned out to be a really, really fun film. It's easy to come up with the ideas, you know. Anybody can come up with ideas for games and stuff, but it's to actually convert something from a, an idea in your head into reality, into something that is a sellable product, that's where the challenge is. Mortal Kombat was unstoppable. It was just fun playing constantly. World Combat 4 is the mother of all fighting games. New technology made for broad advances in video games, and Mortal Kombat took full advantage. In 1998, Combat, now in 3D, took on a whole new dimension. The Mortal Kombat 4 Road Tour is something that's never been done before in the video game world. I remember these big trucks driving around with the Mortal Kombat 4 logo on them. MK4's release was again marked by controversy. A new arcade game is causing quite a sensation. Mortal Kombat 4. A new Mortal Kombat hits a new level of violence. Meet Mortal Kombat 4, the latest horror in violent video games for your kids. We took a look at games like this one, but are they just games, or could they have long-term effects on violent behavior in our society? It definitely wasn't the only game with that kind of violence and blood. There were games that actually surpassed it. It was just the only game that really was, you know, hugely popular and had the violence and blood. In 1997, Hollywood produced a second feature film. The thing that really astounds us is that um, this one arcade game that we made in 1992 has managed to spawn off all these different forms of media. MK4 would be the last version of Mortal Kombat to be released in arcades, and fans eagerly awaited the series' next chapter on home systems. Twisty 3D! Well, the fact that it sold in the millions was really kind of like a, you know, a bit of a, of an attestment to it. I guess it's staying power, I suppose. <laughs> Feeding off the power of next generation systems, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance brings the franchise home and expands its mythology. This is easily the biggest production of all the Mortal Kombat games. You could take, you know, take the work of three of the previous games, put them together, and you have uh, about what it took to, to make this game.
We uh, really wanted to uh, make sure the martial arts was authentic and deadly aligned. I'm really excited about the look of Deadly Alliance. It has a great uh, fantasy look, but still realistic at the same time. In this game, we can make things look a little more real with the clavicles and the neck bones that we didn't used to have in Mortal Kombat 4. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance debuted in Los Angeles at E3 2002 complete with a live show by Adema, performing their original song, Immortal. The future for Mortal Kombat? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Over the last decade, Mortal Kombat has become a legend in the arena of fighting games that will be here for years to come. Mortal Kombat has always been, and always will be. For millennia, the forces of good and evil have been locked in eternal battle over the control of Earthrealm. Some seek to use the tournament to destroy all that is good. Others seek vengeance, power, or eternal life. Time after time, each individual threat has been vanquished, and Earthrealm has enjoyed relative peace for many years. But there is concern that Earth is once again in peril. And this time, the threat of evil has two faces. It is now known that the sorcerer Quan Chi has escaped from the Nether Realm. Since his escape, Quan Chi has unlocked the secret of the ancient runestone. Discovered the ancient undefeatable army of the long forgotten Dragon King. And most disturbing of all, formed an alliance with one of our deadliest enemies, Shang Tsung. With their combined strength, they plotted to overpower the only two beings who could prevent their total domination of the two realms. The first was the Emperor of Outworld, Shao Kahn. In a false show of allegiance, they sprung their attack. then traveled to Earthrealm by way of a mystical portal known only to sorcerers and deities. There, they confronted Earth's mightiest warrior and champion of mortal combat, Liu Kang. It has been Shang Tsung's desire to consume the soul of Earthrealm's greatest warrior. Quan Chi's assistance, he achieved this goal. Liu Kang is dead. They have since returned to Outworld and are using the souls of conquered warriors to resurrect the Dragon King's undefeatable army. Should they succeed, they will have the means to conquer Outworld and eventually Earthrealm. They will be unstoppable. I can no longer stand idly by and watch this evil consume the world. I have relinquished my status as Elder God to return to Earth and lead you all to battle against our old adversaries. We must act now. We must stop this deadly alliance.
By defeating you, Sub-Zero, I have avenged the death of my family and clan. Now my soul can finally rest. Your soul will never rest, Scorpion. The Lin Kuei may have been responsible for your murder, but your family's true killer still remains free. If you are not the murderer, then who is? I am the one you seek. To defeat my nemesis Sub-Zero, I needed the power of a Spectre. You've done my bidding well, Scorpion, but now I must return you to the Nether Realm. the others. He has something special planned for them. I don't know what Katana saw in you. Can't you see, Lu Kang? This is a trap! I once thought that an allegiance with an enemy was a lost cause, Princess Katana. As long as they abide by the treaty. Warriors. Yes, we are most appreciative of your efforts. Now I wish to return in time to my home world before it was destroyed at the hands of Shao Kahn. While I am forced to hide in the shadows. Lieutenant Sonia Blade. What? Sonia, this is Major Briggs. Come in. Sonia, this is Jax. Are you there? A typical day in Mortal Kombat starts with me trying to get in as early as possible. 
Most of the other guys in the team work late into the night. And in the morning, I can get a few uninterrupted hours to program in the characters' moves and plan things out for the rest of the day. Well, he takes his hat off, basically throws it, sticks in the other guy's face. And then he kind of staggers there for a little while, falls back on his back. He's there twitching. And Kung Lao comes there and he lifts his foot up, steps on the guy's stomach, the hat flies up, he grabs it and goes into like a cool pose. Then, starting at about 9 or 10, most of the others start pouring in. And from that point on, the insanity begins. Hello, Steve. Hey. How's it going now? Oh, that was cool. Wow, did you do that all like last night or something? Uh, yeah. I like that. I, uh, I finished the shank really cool. Whatever that is. I was trying to get the, uh, the whipping right. It looks cool when it goes back in his chest. Uh, my main role in the, in the, on the team is uh, background design. You have the very European Gothic uh, flying buttress and the very Asian uh, tower top. I made this single element, which I'm going to repeat. Right now you can see I've got textures on the model, but they're, they're merely placeholder textures. We got these hook swords. I don't know who's getting that, maybe in Mobato. Just a regular staff. And they're all taped up, so when we capture, we get the tanfa. The tanfa. The tonfa. The sai, of course, you gotta have the sai. The regular broadsword. There's more laying around everywhere else. So. Welcome to Vogelland, <laughs> where I'm doing Shang Tsung's fatality. I guess each time he hits, like, I think souls come out. <laughs> You know, and going to Shang Tsung each time, or each time they go up in the air. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work. I just know what I have to do animation-wise. And Ed's going to say, okay, now the souls come out, and now they don't. Can you show me right where she makes impact? Where, where she kicks like him? Right here, you can stop. He doesn't he, you even need him to do anything. Just not, <laughs> don't even have him do any impact. This, I, if you can hand animate so she, you know, the impact propels her away. It's like a like that, or, or we could do it in the game. Cyrex is gonna grind him up kind of like a blender. His doors are gonna open again, and body parts and blood and ripped up flesh is gonna come pouring out of his chest at the end. Tony's actually doing the blood, bloody stumps and bloody pieces. I do a lot of the, um, whatever effects is needed for someone if they're getting, say, cut in half. This would overlay on top, and this part up here I haven't done it yet. Just kind of uh, be the uh, spinal column, so you get two and one here. Yeah, they get a lot of good use of uh, texture space. What experience do you have that would qualify you as motion capture talent? Roll it. You can start now. Four motion. It will be unstoppable. This was the acid bath. This is a concept drawing, and uh, basically, I wanted these statues here that had these uh, churning bowls of acid inside it. And it's kind of like a kind of like a Buddha, but demonized a little or something. It's a close-up, a head study. It would just gush gush out this uh, uh, vomit, this uh, this acid out of their mouth at the end of the round for a fat for a background fatality. It's, it's, it's tedious and trying to limit your geometry and still try to get a lot of detail. Blah. And I don't think he should have these subtle things. It should be like, ah. Making a video game today is almost nothing like when we worked on the first Mortal Kombat in 1991. Mortal Kombat 1 had one programmer, two artists, and a sound designer. That's it. Four guys. Whereas on Deadly Alliance, we have a team of over 50 people. We've been lucky enough to get some of the most talented people in the video game business. And on any given day, it's amazing how many different parts of the game are being worked on at the same time. A lot of what I do involves non-stop bouncing from office to office, checking out character and background designs, as well as all the technical hurdles we have to overcome. There's a lot of issues to deal with in producing this game for three systems simultaneously. So do you want, I mean, Tony said he thinks he could probably do all the characters in a day or two with four levels of damage. Is he kind of curious through a little Really? Yeah, yeah just, just doing basics. Do you think you can do four all the characters in a day or two? I bet you I could. Oh, I just, just cut and pasting. Uh, yeah, I cut oh, and paste okay. same scars and stuff. Do the damage test. Do the 
beat up and tried doing a beat up version of Sub Zero and we may. We're testing adding damage to players' faces. You can see a sample of the wounding on Sub Zero and another character. Man, that looks like. If you want to see it the bad way, spin it around. Oh, is that it's, it's, it's like a new texture map for Sub Zero? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that looks awesome. You know, you know that some of those images actually look better at 128. Because when you have that much data to scramble. Enter. Hey. How's that coming? Right now, I can give you three levels, uh, Jeff. Your son is clean face. And this is level one, just a few bruises and cuts. Two, I imagine, is the level that you're going to see the most Jeez. in the game. And mm -hmm. then uh, three should be like just insane, mm -hmm. just over the top. Just that's looks a good go. though. Yeah, that's a weird. No, I mean, it, I think it's cool enough that uh, that it's worth the effort, you know. Brutal. Yeah. You want to lunch today? I think I need to eat. Uh, let's go get uh, Tony or somebody like that. Good. Mmm, hoagie's good. We're doing Lee Mace Fatality, and John needs um, the Maya model. You know, if it can have the texture maps too, that'd be cool. That's okay. Oh, fuck. That's even the closest one. Usable? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll give him the damn when he comes in next. Cool. Thanks. Well, it has digits in it, but that's what, I, that's what I'm showing. Oh. There you go. Look at that. And here's our test your mic problem. Warm up animations. Go on, Jax. You can do it, Jax. Oh. <laughs> Today's a motion review, and then at the end of it, I'll show you stuff for lighting review, etc. But at any point, feel free to throw any comments out there about anything. Just be aware that I might say, yeah, that hasn't been lit yet, or yeah, we know that. Because I just had my team meeting, and here's an entire list of notes that we had from today's review. The camera motion of the very first shot, mm -hmm. it just seems a little quick. There's no ramp up to it, it just kind of starts speed and it goes across. I know we need to kind of get there, so maybe we need to just kind of look at that shot against the previous shot and see if it works. There's some kind of problem with your work. Everybody says there's a communication problem. What gives? Dude, I don't even know you anymore. Just kick right away. Okay. But, but, you know, do that, do the, do the, uh, 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 for a good book. <laughs> Carlos is the life of this game. This is, now that I've got, uh, alternate Shang Tsung, I'm oh. going in on the details and adding stuff like his back emblem right now. And so whatever detail you see, you know, in terms of folds and wrinkles and stuff, is all in the texture. It'll hide a lot. Let's open up his eyes a little bit and that'll show you. you know, basically, you can get a lot out of a few polys if you just uh, weigh your vertices right. <laughs> okay, maybe you don't have to, you don't have to totally lunge out. Gotcha! <laughs> I, can't, I can't do this with these cameras. <laughs> Kenshi's a reaction. It's just Kenshi now. Okay, Kenshi. The the loop does not match uh, like where their starting heads are. So like see his head right there, mm -hmm. and then on the loop, look how far his head snaps back. I had to loop like the last bit of frames in order to make it look. So I guess we're gonna have to figure out a way to go about connecting the uh, each of the coffins with with uh, the amount of money spent. And right. We've got the database, which is gonna tell us what's in each coffin how much the coffins cost. Uh, once the player opens a coffin, it has to be marked in the player profile table. So how many coffins are there in this uh, crypt? It's a 26 by 26 array, so there's 676 coffins. That's a lot of coffins. It's acting! <laughs> this is the life, man. This is the life. So how's that motion work for you? Things move so fast during one of our typical days that before you know it, the whole day's just flown by. Usually by then we're pretty exhausted, but we know the whole process starts all over again the next day. See you tomorrow, it's seven o'clock.